I might hear someone banging on the lid up the top, but you're not going to open it. Yeah, all of your radiation's high. And a few and stuff. Not to worry people, because them days have all gone. We're lucky we've been accompanied by fire service. Just to ensure we can get down today and everything's safe. But the likes of general public would be too dangerous to come there. That's so it's a very rare insight to the Cold War era. <laughs> What else can I tell you? I think this is the best condition you'll find one now. It's like this. I've been in here during the winter time, not this is that, and they're cold. They are very cold. Believe me, you're underground. You're not one. You can't put a heater on. You have to put a layer of clothing on. Because heat and use electric. We haven't got it. Well, we've got two vents. One that side, one. In the event of anything, we just close them. We can't keep your vents shut forever. We've got no air purification in here. So you can imagine how stuffy we get. Plus, you got your radiation, which you normally settles like dust. So it would be pretty stuffy and horrible. Maybe in the dark. And you imagine how much light that's given up. It's only, a, I don't know how many months it's on there. It's very little anyway. If it was working today, it'd be pretty dark in here. Nothing's happening in the world today, and some of it go off and you come in. But if it got serious, the three were in, they stayed in. If the others turned up, they don't get it. <laughs> so it was only at the three. Because the rations were for free. I've actually had the combo rations and they're disgustingly bad, especially the biscuits. That's why I've got no teeth today, like <laughs> they're rock solid. <laughs> yeah, they're all uh, army combo. We had rations for three weeks. So after that, you could go a few days where you're not getting uh, food. Water's your main thing. Toilets. Imagine we're in a little bunker. We had a chemical one next door, but you can imagine we'll be down here after three weeks. Three blokes, or sometimes girls, because they always see a girl having to use the toilet for three weeks. It will be a pleasant place. These were here in the eventuality of a war, was to warn the public of. Uh, the fallout of a nuclear war and we would monitor it from here directly to the UK in a uh, bunker in the UK which was actually Preston Group and they would take all the readings fallout the weather the wind direction where the fallout is going to be and we could warn the public from there with just a warning station all the information was sent to them prior this small unit on the side, which was a British telecom, we just talked into that and it went through an underground cable, which was telecom, straight to the UK. So that's how we did our monitoring. I'm surprised, it's in very good condition that. I remember the time as you're going down into these. Uh, bunkers, as they call them, monitoring stations at home. Your family's at home, so you might have wives and kids. You think you're safe there, with your wife and kids at home. So that had a big uh, knock on effect if it came to conflict. And when it came to the end, and everyone, I went straight into the some of the vents in the old man. I think it was the only one that left, I think. 
there is members of the ROC still around the Isle of Man, but I don't think there's a great deal of them there. Uh, I'm Steve Kelly, I was a member of the Royal Observer Corps for three years. 